so, you know, I do YouTube videos on fire in a bottle YouTube. And, and my last video I wrote about echidna or I talked about echidnas and, um, echidna is a, um, is, is the spiny anteater. They live in Australia and they're essentially, uh, they're similar to platypuses. They're closely related to platypuses. They're mammals who still lay eggs and, uh, they don't have nipples. They, they, uh, they have mammary glands. They produce milk, but like, they're so old, uh, you know, they, they come, they evolved during the Triassic. And, and so these are like the oldest mammals, the oldest branch of the mammalian family tree that kind of still exists. Right. And when you look at those, um, and, and they hibernate, they hibernate, right. And they eat mostly ants, uh, as the name would suggest. And so they're eating ants that are very high in monounsaturated fats, you know, similar to olive oil. And so, uh, and when you look at them as they approach the, the hibernation season, they're very high. Um, if you look at their fat composition, they're full of these monounsaturated fats. They're full of, uh, of oleic acid, but also palmitoleic acid peaks right before hibernation. Then they hibernate, they burn off a lot of fat. And over the winter, um, the amount of saturated fat that they has increases as a percentage. The amount of monounsaturated fat goes down. Um, and they come out of, and when they come out of hibernation, they're a lot more saturated. Now, one of the reasons that's interesting is that if you look at, and I talked about this in the same video, if you look at ants at the equator, um, there was this paper in out of Brazil and they looked at like 30 different tropical ant species. And those ants are very high in stearic acid. They have a ratio of, some of them have more stearic acid than they had of oleic acid, which is very rare. And certainly in foods grown far from the equator, you almost never find that. Oleic acid is the, the main fat in so many of the different, like any animal fats. Um, but these Brazilian ants, and like I say, 30 different species of ant. It's not like they found this one species. They looked at every ant they could find in Brazil. And they all have this very high ratio of saturated fat to monounsaturated fat. And, and ants don't have a lot of polyunsaturated fat. And then they looked in Germany and they looked at maybe seven different ant species in Germany. I don't think there are as many species of ant in Germany as there are in Brazil. Um, and all of those German ants had about 20 times or more as much oleic acid as they had of stearic acid. Um, and so as you move, uh, farther from the equator, higher in latitude, whether you go north or south, um, what happens is the ratio of stearic acid to oleic acid changes in the food that the first mammals would have eaten. And so mammal, the earliest mammals uh, mostly ate insects. They were small mammals and they ate a lot of things like ants. Um, and so when you move from the equator, you're, you know, and, and this is sort of parallel, right, in the, in the plant kingdom, because you think about cocoa butter, right? Cocoa butter is a tropical plant very saturated, lots of stearic acid. And then, you know, olive oil is grown more in the North and that has a lot of oleic acid and not much stearic acid, just like the ants. Right. And, and this is of course, um, partially due to weather reasons. Um, when it's cold, obviously saturated fat gets very hard and it's probably hard for a, um, you know, if an olive had the same fat composition as a cocoa bean, it would be hard to kind of mobilize those fats and for the olive to run its metabolism and the olive seed to grow on a cold day, you know, in a, in a, even, even somewhere like Italy, which is mostly uh, reasonably warm, but they still have cold days in the winter. And so, you know, so as you get away from the equator, you see a lot more monounsaturated fat and the saturated fat in the echidna peaks right before it goes into hibernation. And so you, you put those facts together and then there's a great series of paper, uh, papers from James Natambi. And in the lab, what he shows is if you remove that gene, the one that converts the saturated fats to monounsaturated fats in a mouse, uh, the mice can't get fat. Um, <laughs> so, so that, so these are called S, this gene is called SCD1. And so if you take an SCD1 deficient mice or a mouse or a SCD1 knockout mice, mouse, they, they have super high metabolic rates. Their metabolic rates are like 40% higher than, um, than a normal mouse. Uh, and, and it's only because they can't make 
monounsaturated fat. And so then also in that same John Speakman paper that we already mentioned, he showed that um, in mice, they, they fed them all these different oils at like 40% of calories. And he showed that the ones fed the most saturated fat had the highest metabolic rates. And as they fed them more and more and more unsaturated fats, the metabolic rates in these mice just drop. Um, and the Tambi has a whole series of papers. What, one of the really interesting ones he wrote was we have uh, something called SREB P, which is, uh, they call it the, the master lipogenic transcription factor, right? And so this is a, this is a transcription factor that, that turns on your genes involved in de novo lipogenesis, which means making fat, right? And so if you eat carbohydrate or if you eat protein, if you have upregulated lipogenic enzymes, you'll turn more of that into fat. And what Natambi found was that um, the oleic acid binds to that the master uh, lipogenic transcription factor, SREB-P, and activates it. And so the transcription factor <laughs> that controls lipogenesis is actually activated by monounsaturated fats. And, and so what you see, so there's a positive feedback loop there where uh, the mammal is, is, as it moves away from the equator, it's eating ants that are getting higher and higher in monounsaturated fat. And that monounsaturated fat is hitting all kinds of signals. One, it's activating PPA or alpha um, when you consume it. And PPA or alpha is a very interesting, um, that's another high level transcription factor that's kind of monitoring the fats that you eat. And it's causing your metabolism to behave accordingly. And then um, these monounsaturated fats are actually activating these pro-lipogenic uh, enzymes. And if you look in feeding studies where they take a rat or a pig and you feed them five different kinds of oil, um, you know, there's one in uh, rats that I'm sure that I've, sh I've shared with you, but there's one where they fed them beef tallow or they fed them olive oil, or they fed them, I believe it was high oleic, uh, or sorry, high linoleic sunflower oil. Um, the ones fed the olive oil had the highest expression of lipogenic enzymes in their liver by a lot. And then you see the same thing happens in pigs. And so, you know, you have like, uh, so we have a, on a lot of different levels, it appears that uh, oleic acid, the monounsaturated fat can be a real problem for your metabolism and your metabolic rate. Um, and just to throw one other thing out there, there's another Natambi paper where they showed that the oleic acid prevents the breakdown of circulating cannabinoids. Um, and so, and so the cannabinoids are endogenous molecules that we make that hit our cannabinoid receptors and kind of can give you the munchies, right? If you have too many of these cannabinoids and, and the, the oleic acid is preventing the breakdown of the cannabinoids. And so you see like on eight different levels, the oleic acid is part of this positive feedback loop of, you know, animals in the north kind of fattening for winter. Um, and the other thing, and just one more fact on that um, idea, the ants in Germany that have a lot more oleic acid also have a lot higher a body fat percentage. So as the ants move away from the equator, they have more oleic acid and they're fatter. Um, and so, <laughs> you know, you see, so you see what to me looks like this kind of overwhelming evidence that oleic acid is really part of the problem. Um, and this is of course shocking to people because we're always being told that olive oil is great um, and that people from Italy are lean and healthy um, and th there's a funny, there's a funny story about that. So, uh, you know, of course there's different ways that we have of assessing a population and how many people are obese. And one of the ways is you just send people like a, like a, a, a flyer in the mail and they write down their, their height and their weight and they send it back in. And then we do other studies where they take a representative population sample and you have to go into the clinic and get measured by, you know, a nurse or a healthcare professional. And interestingly, the Italians do really well in terms of obesity rates on the first kind of study where you just ask them what their weight is. But if you weigh them, you find out that 
that they're actually uh, significantly more obese than, for instance, the French who share, who they share a border with and where they eat butter. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. I think that this is, to me, this is really interesting. It's not that monounsaturated fats are poisonous for humans. My sense of this is that the issue here is that they're a signal. Yes. And, and the ratio or the relative contributions of our diets of oleic acid, which is an 18 carbon monounsaturated fat versus stearic acid and other saturated fats. Stearic acid is an 18 carbon saturated fat. You mentioned stearic acid, just so people know. Stearic acid present in tallow. It's in the fire starter that we make at hardened soil. It's kind of the reason we developed that supplement, but it's an 18 carbon saturated fat. Clearly in mice leads to leanness, probably in humans leads to leanness as well. Pretty clear data there. But it seems that there's this ratio in our foods between oleic acid and stearic acid. And we'll get to linoleic acid, which is an 18 carbon omega-6 polyunsaturated fat that I've talked about with seed oils. We'll get to that as well because they're all connected. But I don't want people to think that oleic acid is, is bad for humans. But understand this, that butter is what, Brad? 30%, 35% oleic acid, MUFA? Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's only like 25% usually, below okay. 30. And then tallow is maybe 47%? Something like that, yeah, approaching half. Yep, and then olive oil is what, 75% yeah, monounsaturated sure. fat? Yes, exactly. And, exactly, and, and olive oil has... And then if you look the other way, olive oil is only like 3% stearic acid, I think. And so, so that ratio of, of oleic acid to stearic acid in olive oil is 25 to 1. Um, in butter, it might be 2.5 to 1. And so you see that ratio just explode as you go from butter to olive oil. And, and beef suet is a good example. Suet is specifically tallow, tallow from the kidney. Um, and it's uh, suet is very high in stearic acid. And so even though beef suet might be 40% oleic acid, higher than butter, but it's balanced out by being, you know, 20 or 25% stearic acid. Um, and so that seems to work pretty well. And, and beef suet was the classic um, frying fat of the French. Uh, you know, the chef or the author, Elizabeth David, who wrote several uh, books about French cooking says, yes, the French prefer beef suet to fry in. Um, and so that's very classic. And the other thing about stearic acid and the thing that I've written about in, uh, or made a video, a video about and talk about in the blog is that when you look at human adipose tissue in studies from the 1960s, or, or there's even one from like 1943, uh, it showed that human adipose tissue was something like seven or 8% stearic acid. And if you look today, um, not only in people who are obese, but the general population, everyone, whether or not you're obese today, the normal stearic acid rate is less than three and a half percent. It's like 3.3%. And it used to be more like six. And so, you know, as a, as a society, uh, our stearic acid levels have dramatically dropped. Um, and I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any question about that. I, I think it's, that's unquestionable. Um, and so a lot, right. And so you see the metabolic rate drop and you see the, the parallel drop in human adipose tissue, stearic acid content. And that means that we have upregulated SCD one, which is the thing that, you know, James Natambi in mice has shown is absolutely integral to this process of obesity. And just to show one more example of exactly how, uh, like you say, as signaling molecules, so that oleic acid prevents the breakdown of the, um, of the endocannabinoids. They give you the munchies. Well, the stearic acid does the opposite. It increases the activity of the enzyme that break down the endocannabinoids. And so if you have more stearic acid and less oleic acid, you're going to have less circulating endocannabinoids. And the endocannabinoids themselves, they are involved in appetite regulation, but they also can directly slow down metabolic rate. And we don't really know all the ways they do it, but it's clear that they do. At the level of thyroid hormones, they do. I mean, they negatively affect thyroid hormones. And there's, yeah. there's, a lot, there's a lot going on there with thyroid hormones. And interestingly, this is foreshadowing 
there's evidence that linoleic acid and oleic acid both negatively affect the binding of T3 to its nuclear receptor. They both negatively affect the conversion of T4 to T3. So the conversion of thyroxine to triiodothyronine, T3 being triiodothyronine, that's the active form of thyroid hormone. And they both negatively affect the binding of thyroxine and T3 to thyroid binding globulin. So it's like at, at every level across multiple species, often including humans, uh, we've tried to be careful to say when it's a mouse study versus a pig study versus a study in bears or humans, we can clarify that more in the future. But often across multiple species, across multiple pathways, we see signaling molecules in the fats. But, but Brad, calories in, calories out, just cut your... This is what I'm talking about, right? That, that these are signaling molecules. And again, it's not that you should never eat linoleic acid. Tallow contains one to 2% linoleic acid. Safflower right. oil is 65% linoleic acid. There's a big difference there. It's, it's like, I don't want to say the dose makes the poison, but the dose is important here. And so the ratio, and I love that you pointed this out, these are probably evolutionarily determined ratios of stearic acid to oleic acid. So saturated 18 carbon, monounsaturated 18 carbon to polyunsaturated 18 carbon being linoleic acid in this case, the ratios there are just evolutionary signals to humans to say, hey, somehow you wandered up into British Columbia and you need to get fat right now. And there are some nuts on these trees, or if you're eating animals, they're going to have more polyunsaturated fat, or the animals are eating more polyunsaturated fat, or there are some egg corns over here that have more monounsaturated fat. You, you just, monounsaturated fats are more available as you move away from the equator, as are polyunsaturated fats. The problem, and this is something I want to make sure people understand this, and then we'll dive deeper, is that even though a lot of people listening to this podcast might live in places, Brad, you live in upstate New York, where there is winter, hopefully nobody listening to this podcast is going to go through a food scarcity over the winter. We, we live in this sort of discordant environment where we're giving our body signals that it should fatten out up because there's a food scarcity coming with winter, but we can all go to the grocery store and still eat food all winter. Thankfully, this is an amazing time to be alive as a human, but we're giving our body these signals. And so when I see an obese human now, it makes me think, oh, they're just giving their body the wrong signals, or they've been giving their body the wrong signals for the last 30 years. Even if it's here at the eighth north latitude in Costa Rica, where it's very warm, these foods full of these oils, giving people the wrong signal are here. Right. And so, so even at the equator, people can get obese. One of the most interesting things that I saw you point out in one of your videos was the difference in the obesity levels between Southern and Northern Italy, and then talk about obesity in Spain. Because I think that when people hear this notion that monounsaturated fat, rich olive oil, and we'll talk about something good in olive oil in a moment, potentially. Yeah. The notion that monounsaturated fat olive oil is bad for humans, they think, and you've mentioned this in one of your videos, there are comments that say, well, then how do you square this with all of these regions of the world where people eat this olive oil, they're so healthy. But you pointed out in your video that like, there's a real difference in the Southern region of Italy versus the Northern region of Italy and then Spain. 